Hey there, Joe Braun here, the DCS Mech Warriors. In this video, we're gonna to continue to layer on more sensors to our op mode. In this particular video, we are doing the touch sensor. You could also use the exact same code to do a uh, magnetic limit switch from Rev. So let me go ahead and switch over to our screen and we'll get started here. So I'm gonna open up Team Code and then go down to Java and then open up YouTube. And the last sensor that we did was the color sensor. I'm gonna right click on that and click copy. And then I'm gonna go to YouTube, uh, the YouTube folder and click paste. And just like in previous videos, there is a uh, Java class name inside the FTC repository called touch sensor. So we're gonna have to abbreviate that. So I'm just gonna be TO and then sensor and then push enter. And so we have our uh, copy of our sensor class that we've been layering in. Uh, so what I wanna do now is go to new member training and open up our tent touch sensor notes. I'm gonna drop that down to the bottom and then close our side menu so we have more screen real estate. So if I scroll up to the top of both these, uh, we'll get started. So the um, notice that's a lowercase c, so let me fix that real quick. Um, so I'm gonna put an enter here, and on this one, we're gonna be plugging in our touch sensor to a digital port, so something that reads as on or off, that's what digital means. And uh, I do have a note down here a little further to talk about that it defaults to the higher numbers. So when you plug in to a digital port, it'll say 0-1, 2-3. So you can actually put two sensors using a splitter on one port. So the port that we're plugging in here is the 0-01, uh, and then it defaults to the higher number if you're only using one sensor. So we're gonna be plugging in to port 01. So we wanna go ahead and put that in our configuration file of the new op mode that we're writing with all of our sensors in one op mode. So we've updated our configuration file as far as our notes. We now need to go on to our driver hub and update the configuration file there. This is just where we're recording that. Um, so if we continue down, uh, we still have this one dis disabled for our classroom. Yours is probably um, commented out as far as that. That was a misclick there. So you probably have two slashes in front so that it shows up. And then we're still putting this in the examples group under teleop on the right hand side of our driver hub. Our class name was refactored or renamed um, at the beginning when we uh, copied the class. And then you see all of the variables, the global variables that we've been using uh, for this series. And so what we wanna do is come down here right below color sensors and then insert our variables for our touch sensor that we're gonna be doing. So I'm gonna copy those from my notes here. Control C on the keyboard and Control V to paste those in. We're calling in the touch sensor class that should automatically import the code up here in our little hidden spot right there is touch sensor. So I'm gonna collapse that and uh, put that back to hidden. And then let me drop back down. So we have our touch sensor and our variable name. We're just simply calling touch sensor in lower camel case. Again, we already talked about it, it was on a digital port and it defaults to zero one. We've created two other variables that we're gonna use a little bit later. The first one is a Boolean, so true, false. Um, is the touch sensor being pressed? And at the beginning, when we init, we're gonna say that's false. And then we have a place to store the value. Um, the value comes back as a one or a zero, um, whether it's pushed or not. And so we're storing that value also in the variable called touch sensor value, but we'll do that a little bit later in the code. Our servo was set up in, I think two videos ago. Um, we've been using it for the past couple of videos, but we're basically gonna get this touch sensor to do something with the servo based on the condition, whether it's pushed or not, um, where, where the servo is gonna move to based on that condition. So uh, we'll do that here in a second. We'll come back to our run op mode in a minute. Um, but what we need to do now is go ahead and create our uh, init function for our piece of hardware. So we've got the IMU, we've got the servo, we've got the distance sensor, we've got the color sensor. We wanna create a new one for our touch sensor. So I'm gonna drop down here in my notes and I'm gonna grab that uh, touch sensor. Uh, here it is right there. So I'm gonna copy, control C, control V and paste that in for our knit touch sensor. It's grayed out because uh, we haven't used it yet. But inside here, we're connecting our Java uh, variable name, touch sensor, 
to our configuration file name, touch sensor, uh, for the hardware map, we're calling the class of touch sensor to do that. So this is the only piece of code that for the initial setup anyway, that we need to do for the init touch sensor. So now we're gonna go up to our hardware stack, so our init hardware stack, um, where we've been putting all of our pieces of our hardware that we need to init, and we're gonna add in init touch sensor, and then I'll just push tab to fill that out. So now when uh, the run op mode calls the init hardware, that's gonna happen right here automatically when it calls this uh, hardware stack or method stack inside of net hardware. So that's already set up. Our initial setup is done. What we want to do now is come down and uh, we're going to get the information and stored in the two variables that we created at the beginning. So I'm going to copy this method right here and a little further down we are getting some code for the color sensor so we're going to put that right below um, our color sensor, so we've got our touch sensor data. So we want to know from the sensor is the button being pressed, and we're going to store that in our true false boolean uh, variable. So is pressed, uh, and then we're going to also get the value that it's sending, either a zero or a one, and we're going to store that in the touch sensor value variable. So anytime this method is called, it's gonna go get that information and store it in the variables that we created, again, up at the very top in our global variables or member section. So I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna go back up here and we need to use this function because it's grayed out. Where do we wanna use that? Well, we've been calling our get color right here. So let's go ahead and comment that out. So control forward slash, and now it's commented out. But now we're gonna get our touch sensor data and we want to do the exact same thing. I need to add my two parentheses and my semicolon to finish out that method call. We want to come down here with uh, get color. We're going to comment that out. At the very end, let's go ahead and put an enter and then paste in two parentheses and semicolon to call that uh, touch sensor data. So once we init and while it's waiting for play to be pressed, it's going to go get the touch sensor data over and over as it runs it through this loop. We push play and then it's going to do the same thing. It's going to go get the touch sensor data as it goes through this loop over and over again. All right. Now we need to change this color telemetry. I'm going to go ahead and comment that out. And then I want to do that uh, down here also. Wrong line. There we go. Comment out the telemetry data. We need to create some telemetry data for this touch sensor. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. Our telemetry we always put at the very bottom. And what we're going to do is create some space down here uh, below our color sensor that we just commented out. And we're going to put in our slip switch telemetry. So I chose to put switch because um, you could be using a touch sensor or you could be using a magnetic limit switch. It uses the exact same code. Um, so I just left this as switch telemetry. Again, it's grayed out. Um, so I'm copying that, but before I move away, what I should discuss is what we're displaying. We've done it a lot in other videos, but just real quick, we've got a variable that we created and we're displaying that data on the uh, driver hub so that the user can see what whether the button's been pressed or not. We've also got the value, so it should display a zero or a one. Um, I, again, I don't have a control hub to actually test this out. I find it kind of odd in looking at this that it has two decimals. So it's probably going to display 0, 0.00 or uh, 1.00 um, with this output. Uh, it's basically on or off because it's digital. So uh, I find the two decimals a little bit confusing. So you might mess around with that. Um, I don't know if a zero would work or not. Uh, but then uh, the get position, we do want two decimals uh, to put that in a percentage or it'll show up as a decimal. But to find out where the servo is, uh, again, we've discussed that in previous videos when we set up the servo. So there's some data being displayed about what we're running, actually running in this op mode. So what we need to do now, I'm gonna, uh, I think I did it earlier, but I'm going to push control C on my method uh, here. And when I call it, then I'll add my parentheses up top. So let's go do that. So I'm going to go back up to our run op mode. And after we get the information from the touch sensor, what we want to do is display that on the driver hub. So I'm going to put my parentheses and my semicolon. And then after we do that here, I'm going to do the same thing, paste that in, and then put my parentheses and semicolon. So we have um, stored the information in the variables, and then we've output it to the screen. 
But at this point, we haven't done anything with the servo based on the data that it's getting. So we need to adjust our teleop controls. So right here, we already have teleop controls. It's right here. Um, so once we push play, it's gonna do the two things that it was doing um, while we were waiting for play to press. But now we want the actual servo to be controlled. So uh, before I jump down there, I guess probably I should go over this real quick because it was done in a previous video. When we init the servo, it's moving to 50% or halfway through its motion. Position one is gonna be zero. Um, so it's one of the end stops of the servo itself. So it's gonna rotate all the way to one side. And then if we put it in position two, it's gonna rotate 180 degrees or approximately 180 degrees to its other position on the other side. So this is a, in standard rotation mode. So about 180 degrees on the servo. So let me drop down and we're going to adjust our teleop controls. So now this was the color sensor and we don't want to control it with the control uh, color sensor anymore. So we're going to comment that out and push enter a couple times so that we can put in our teleop controls for our touch sensor. So I'm going to copy this and paste it in and then let's discuss what we have. So uh, we have a conditional statement. So if this is true, we'll talk about what that is in a second. It's going to run this code block right there. If it's not true, it's going to run. Uh, so else it's going to run this code block. So if it's true, it puts it to position two. If it's false, it puts it to position one. And if you remember right, one was zero and this was 100 percent or one um, for position two. So if the touch sensor is pressed, so this is a true statement, the button is pressed, it's going to move all the way to 100 percent. If it's not, it doesn't meet this condition. The only other condition is false. So if it's not, it's going to move all the way to zero. So the init position as is 50% all the way through, so about halfway. And then as soon as you push play, it's going to move either to one end stop or the other based off of this conditional statement that we've pressed, uh, placed right here inside Teleop. So I think that's the end of this video. Let me double check real quick. Just to make sure I didn't miss anything, checking my notes. We talked about you'd use the same code as a magnetic limit switch. So it looks like that's it. Let me go ahead and check out our next one. Uh, we're going to set up an op mode to use the built-in voltage sensor in the next lesson. So if you uh, are interested in that, check that video out. Stick around in the series and uh, have a great day. We'll catch you later. Bye-bye.